Hello, everyone. This is another Donorom podcast. Uh, we are we are closing out Xenogears soon. Eventually. Not this time, but soon. Uh, maybe this time. Depends. Our, our notes have kind of surprised us here lately. Anyway, uh, I'm Bo. And I am uh, Don. And uh, we, we once again just want to mention our sponsor, uh, Ashley Luan K on Instagram. That link will again be provided in the description. Again, an excellent resource uh, for uh, nursing information, whether it's education, uh, the actual work of nursing, or anything relating to the field of nursing. Uh, we encourage you to check out those links and uh, give her a view over there on Instagram. And uh, today, today we're coming to uh, probably one of the most important parts of the story of Xenogears. It's the time where we get a few questions answered and several more presented. Yes. <laughs> We also finally figure out what a Xenogear is. <laughs> because that's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah, it's not just some wacky thing. It's not a Zeno saga. Yeah. It's not a Zeno blade. It's a, a Zeno gear. gear. Okay, so last time, Faye was frozen in carbonate, but he's still conscious, and he's dreaming. He sees his companions. Mm -hmm. He sees wise man, Ellie, and he sees Ellie as, well, you know, Ellie is the mother. And finally, he sees a spotlight shining on another version of himself, a younger version of himself, a blood-covered version of himself, mm -hmm. Id. Id says, I misjudged you. You created another persona and shut yourself up. Uh, you, kept, you kept your ego safe from all the terrible things in the world. This fey controls your body, but resistance is useless. Come with me. We've got some memories to look into. Cut back to 500 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Roni Fatima, who looks a lot like Bart, <laughs> whole lot like Bart. Um, it, you know, he is Bart. He's leading a campfire chat with Lacan and some other dudes. Lacan, who is Faye, admits that he's afraid for, for for Sophia, who was Ellie, and they were childhood friends after all. And one of the generic dudes is like, "Whoa, you knew the Holy Mother from childhood." <laughs> <laughs> was she hot? <laughs> I know she is now, but was she always like that or did she put some work into it? Come on. <laughs> Krellian shows up and Roni pulls a textbook Bart and teases Lacan about his feelings for Sophia. Come on, man. You got to lighten up. <laughs> By the way, when we say he looks like just like Bart. We don't mean Bart Fatima. We mean uh, Bart Simpson. Yeah. This, this guy looks just like Bart Simpson. <laughs> don't have a cow, man. Don't have a cow. <laughs> Ay, caramba. <laughs> Uh, so cut to daytime. We're gonna be there's, there's gonna be a lot of jump cuts mm -hmm. in, this, in this dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, so Lacan and Krellian are now having a heart to heart talking about Sophia. Krellian says that he's really interested in science and learning, especially nanotechnology that he's, that he's learning from Melchior. And Lacan doesn't know exactly what he's talking about, but they're good friends, and he's glad to see that Krellian has a passion. And Krellian says that he's been investigating the research into some of the ancient. Zeboim, specifically one scientist who um, seems to have been using nanotechnology for some interesting purpose. What we may never know who wrote it. Spoilers, it was Faye <laughs> <laughs> as Kim. Yep. And Ellie as Nurse Ellie from back then. Uh, cut to an another setting. It's Sophia and Lacan, and Lacan is painting that portrait. That has been dominating a lot of back, a lot of memories mm -hmm, throughout mm -hmm. this. Sophia notes that Lacan is very melancholy lately and tells him to rest. He's been painting a while. Cut back to another campfire with Roni and friends, and Krellian says Sophia saw potential in Krellian when he was nothing more than a brute, violent prick. But and she is everything to him. She made him believe in himself. Her smile is killing me. <laughs> is that a quote? Uh, yeah, it's Faye's quote. I'm sorry. It's like you cut back to Krellian and Krellian and Lacan are hanging out in the uh, painting room and he's looking at um, and Faye is like, man, her, her smile is killing me. The more she smiles at me, the more I feel insignificant inside my heart. There's an empty existence other than that painting. I have no worth yet. She continues to accept my presence. I feel get, I feel smaller and smaller. And he looks at the painting, then in his hands. I don't. I don't have the. I didn't have this feeling in the beginning. I just wanted to paint her one more minute, one more second longer. I wanted to keep painting forever, but suddenly I couldn't. As the picture neared completion, the empty part of me started to manifest itself in the brush strokes. I was putting her as she really is, but this picture is my own self, my empty, 
shell itself has begun to appear in there. That's why I've got to stop. Krellian tells Lacan that he needs to accept what's obvious. Sophia loves him. And he is one lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> so he better return her feelings because she needs him. It's the classic when you lo- the guy yeah, that lost when, the girl appro- yeah, approaches yeah, the guy that You need to her. accept it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you cut to Krellian and Sophia, and he asks Sophia to rest more and be kinder to herself. Cut back to the portrait room, and Roni is looking at Sophia's portrait, and he says, you know, that smile is really great. It's a lot different than the one that, like, she doesn't wear that smile anywhere else. It's only in this portrait. She only smiles Aww. that way for you. <laughs> Aww. And Lacan is still saying that he doesn't want the portrait to be finished. He doesn't want that to be over. Roni tells Lacan that he's been hanging out with the cool rebel army for a good while now. He's not <laughs> worthless. He's a part of this. He's not just a painter. Lacan believes he's not worthy of Sophia's love. She is everything to everyone, and he's nothing. Zephyr... Queen Zephyr, well, future Queen Zephyr, shows up in the room telling everyone, okay, guys, Council of Elders on Shabbat have decided to hit Soylent tomorrow. <laughs> Sophia will lead the attack. Krellian says Sophia is needed, needed in Nassan because of all the refugees. Zephyr says Sophia herself has decided to lead the attack. Cut to a battlefield. Sophia is injured, and Krellian punches Lacan for failing to protect her. Cut to a hospital room. Sophia wakes up and tells Lacan that she loves him because he is has empathy and always feels guilty for not being able to do more for people. Krellian overhears and is kind of simmering about it. And he goes on a rampage against Solarian Gears, like on a one-man crusade just to vent his anger. And then you cut to Sophia's suicide attack that was referenced before, uh-huh. after when they were trapped, and she lo- leads the flagship on a suicide run to buy them time to escape. And she's like flying straight towards the Death Star. Lacan screams like into like a radio that they can find another way to help her escape, but she won't listen. And then you cut to Lacan alone with the unfinished portrait. Krullian recognizes that Shavat did them dirty. <laughs> Sophia is dead for no reason, and what God would allow that? He remembers Sophia once said that God's power is found within oneself, not from the outside. And he comes to a decision that dominates his life for half a millennium. <laughs> if God does not exist, then I will create God with my own hands. And he wanders off into history. <laughs> Roni says, well, there's no chance of beating Solaris now. Not right now. Uh, we need to found a country specifically for that reason and rebuild. So, Lacan, what are you going to do? Lacan is hanging out in Shavat's dungeon. And he's just moping. And he sees a vision of Ellie interspersed with Miang. Because Miang was traded to Shavat as part of that deal. Mm -hmm. They have her in a force field, which is actually really smart. She's an immortal being that jumps from person to person when When she she dies. dies, So just just keep her on ice. Do the ill, just ill it in her. Yeah. Put her where you put ill it in. And she is there. Like, she's like, uh, Miang is just like, hey, hey, buddy. Hey, hey, you know, let me out. <laughs> you know, you, you couldn't save her because she didn't have power. But, you know, I, can, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got a lead on some power. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me out. Let me out. Hey, and then he goes, then he, 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 looks, he looks over and he's like, did you say power? power? I, could, I could get used to that. I could use power. Okay. <laughs> Turns out, yeah, the Miang that was betrayed by the Gazelle Ministry is still alive, being held by Shabbat in a force field. Uh, <laughs> um, Miang, you want that, don't you? Unrivaled power. Let me out of this cage. I'll show you. Cut to a frozen wasteland, and Lacan approaches a green glow. Meanwhile, back in the present, Dan from Lahan. <laughs> Dan from Dan Lahan. From Lahan. <laughs> Diamond Dan from Lahan. <laughs> He's back. He's back. He's selling cars. Apparently, he didn't mutate. He's already mutant enough. <laughs> that kid's head is way too big. Have you seen that character yeah. portrait? Oh, well, you knew he was coming back because yeah. he had a character it's portrait. True. And he, he is like, he's basically a leprechaun. So, <laughs> anyway, he's hanging out and looking at Faye's frozen body. And he's like, you know, dude, I came down here to be mad at you. But this is a little messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Saiten's daughter 
shows up, like Midori, she she shows up to keep him company, and she points out that hey, uh, who Dan? Uh, Dan. She she shows up next to Dan. They're both the same age, basically. Yeah. So, like hey, um, not gonna freak you out. He seems to be waking up. That's not supposed to happen. Hey, I, I don't want to freak you out or anything, but uh, yeah. So Faye escapes from Shavat. I get the image of like an Incredible Hulk like transfer, <laughs> like or like a Frankenstein. It's pretty <laughs> much that. Only it's id, so it's going to be snide and <laughs> dickish. Uh, he escapes from Shavat and heads off to the site of the Zohar that we saw in that flashback. So it is id. It is id. But he doesn't destroy Shavat. He just leaves. He's going back to Zohar mm. because he had like the last memory that he showed Faye from within his psyche was, was the site of Zohar. But id coming out, it's just interesting to know that he doesn't kill anyone. Yeah. He just leaves. Yeah. He's Even though there's two perfectly innocent children standing there, <laughs> yeah. and it's normally all about that. Yeah. Um, so, Saiten leads the party, along with their gears, to that site. Apparently, they're working again now for some reason. Because Midori told him. Yeah. Daddy. Midori, like, yeah, he went that way. He went that way, and uh, Saiten's like, hmm, seems like danger. That's not normally something I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, cut back into Faye's head. Mm-hmm. And it is telling Faye that he's not allowed to see any more memories because those memories belong to him. <laughs> Father, no, these are mine. These are my. <laughs> these are my memories. You know, if you want, if you want memories so damn much, you can talk to the coward <laughs> who won't let me see his memories. Um, we still don't know who the coward yeah, is, he, by the way. We don't. He's just. We just know that he's the primal Faye that Saiten was talking about. He's the real Faye. The real Faye, or the fundamental Faye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter. Uh, Id says that he'll take over eventually. Faye tells Id that he does have memories, though. He is seeing these flashbacks throughout the game. Like, he may be the mock personality, but he's more than that. He's seeing these things. And Id's like, hey, you're just seeing what I want you to see, brother. Brother. <laughs> brother. <laughs> I Bro- like the idea me. of Id being... <laughs> Look at me. What, hang on. When they remake this game in HD with voice acting, I need Hulk Hogan to do its voice. <laughs> Listen, brother, you're only seeing what I want you to see, man. <laughs> also, it looks like your friends are here. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm where I need to be. I came here to reestablish contact with the existence to tie together all the threads of your memories since ancient times and cut them off. That is the fate of the contact. All is ready. It's time for the true awakening. I will eliminate all those who were full of hypocrisy from the very beginning. And this is it. This is it talking. Wow. So this is a lot more agency than he's been given before. Yeah. Saiten and the party find a giant red heart beating in an ice cave. <laughs> and out of it pops Red Weltall and a giant monolisk, the Zohar, which has like a little eye thing, like a little yeah, Illuminati eye. Of course it does. Yeah. So Red Weltall immediately begins fighting with the party before Wise Man shows up. And he says he's here to exterminate Id to prevent him from annihilating the power, the, the world using the power of the Zohar. Id says, ah, I can't be stopped by you. You couldn't even protect your own wife and son. Oh, he's letting oh. some things out. Oh, Id. Oh, oh. oh. wise man. man. Wise man. You, you, wise man's going to sh- be mad, <laughs> man. <laughs> you cannot bear to show your face to your own son. That's why you wear that mask, isn't it? God. Ain't you, Mr. K? <laughs> Ain't you, Mr. <laughs> he's not Laotian. <laughs> He ain't, he ain't Japanese. <laughs> He's Laotian. Ain't you, Mr. Khan? <laughs> He's Faye's mysterious father, <laughs> Khan Wong. <laughs> Wait, wasn't wasn't Id when he was working at Assassin working with Groff? Yes. Groff? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's right. This man is Faye's, no, I mean my father, Khan Wong. Khan threatens to destroy Id, and Id's like, as if you could, you sissy. <laughs> Mother died because of your cowardly behavior, and as a result, he ran away. He, You ran away from that reality. And then... The coward ran. I'm sorry. The coward ran away from that reality by entering into his memories and keeping them for me. Now I continue my existence, bearing all the hatred of my life. <laughs> you wouldn't imagine what that's like. <laughs> Disturb starts playing in the background. Yeah, he's walking. He, he's 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 getting through some stuff, man. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> he's gonna be better yeah. by the end of this. This is all coming out. This yeah. is all good. <laughs> yeah. Khan tells Id that there is exactly one person in the entire universe who can possibly understand what it is going through, and that's Faye. Is this world truly so vile that you would actually be okay with everything going back to nothing? And it gets really angry, like, hey, you made me this way. You and that woman. You don't know who that Mm. woman he's referring to. 
Red Weltall starts wailing on Khan's gear. Khan says, please take this fistful of memories I am giving you. <laughs> Become one with yourself and with me. <laughs> uh, fistful of memories. Fistful of memories. Fistful of memories. <laughs> <laughs> so while this is going on, Bart, Billy, and Saiten are just kind of letting this kung fu family <laughs> work through their stuff. It's like when you're over at your friend's house and it's like his dad yells at him and he yells back at his dad. Oh. And you're really awkward. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here right now. <laughs> Saiten does yell out to Faye, Do you still want to help Ellie, right? Bart, however, has had plenty of bad experiences with Id, so he's staying as quiet right. as possible. So meanwhile, back in Faye's head, Faye is sympathizing with Id, having seen all the memories he's been forced to live with, and he's almost about to give up on fighting him, seeing it life is worthless, but then Saiten mentions Ellie, and that triggers something. So Faye and Id are now watching an old family movie <laughs> of childhood Faye playing with a ball, and Id is angry that he's being forced to see this right now. He is only letting me see this because it's for, for, for you. It's the coward. We're finally seeing the coward's memories. Everything despised and unwanted was pushed onto me while he shut himself up in this little shell. That coward, the basis of our personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Id and the coward start sharing memories of Faye's childhood from their different perspectives. Khan is a strict but reliable father. Mom is nice. And then she became ing- evil one day. <laughs> <laughs> Khan was away she, on <laughs> she went to a libertarian party headquarters yeah. <laughs> and came home. It's not that far from the truth. <laughs> uh, so Khan says, Farewell, family. I'm off on kung fu business. I'll be there. I'll be back in a while. And mom says, Oh, take your time, honey. All right, Faye, it's time to go to the secret laboratory. I'm just going to read up on the gold standard. <laughs> All right, you're going to be probed and tortured for a while, and then I'm going to go home, and you're not going to say a thing to father. <laughs> <laughs> now, a bunch of guys with a high compatibility for anima relics tried to make contact with Faye to force him to awaken, but they all perished. Id says men, women, the old, young, even demi-humans, suffering, grief, fear, ecstasy, a variety of emotions and words lingered, all tumbled about me like broken dolls. In front of Khan, Mom acted normally, so she's just gaslighting the hell out of you. <laughs> like, oh, you, you, you silly, that didn't happen. I didn't take, you, you weren't, you, you weren't, you're not being used in nefarious experiments, Faye, come on. <laughs> Would mommy do that? Yeah. Oh, this is disturbing. It really is, especially when you factor in what exactly has happened with his, his mom. She became Yang. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Some oh. Yang died, and and Faye's all of a mom, sudden, no. So she did go to the <laughs> Libertarian yeah. Party headquarters. Uh, so to escape from the nightmare of his daily existence, Id was created to absorb the bad stuff. By the time Khan realized there was something really wrong with Karen, a.k.a. Miang, Id had already become a separate personality. <laughs> Back in the real world, Khan explains to the party that his wife has become Miang, if you hadn't put that together. Mm-hmm. Id goes back into fight mode, saying that mom wasn't special, just a matter of probability. Miang recognized that Faye was the contact, and that attracted Groff. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Id explains that Groff wants to return to his original body to unify. He is Lacan. He is the original Lacan. He had children, but he never died. Some of his descendants were pretty much reincarnations, complete with his memories. Divided 500 years ago, he would become a part of us both. Lacan became Groff. He destroyed everything on the face of the earth, mastered how to possess the bodies of others by dwelling in their minds, and he probably enabled... (laughs) Was pre- he was enabled to do this after contact with the existence. After he went off, Miang led him 500 years ago to the Zohar. Uh-huh. The bodies died, but Lacan's spirit continued living by possessing others. He had come, th- he had come that day to return. So the existence is a euphemism for the Zohar. Yeah. Okay. Or some, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had come that day to return his soul at last to the perfect reincarnation of his physical body, the body of Fay. Khan tried to fight Groff, but come on. Right. Khan doesn't have the power. Faye's mom doesn't even move. 
Faye gets fed up watching his dad get beaten up by this guy who just showed up talking about power for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so Faye pulls a literal Gohan. Stop hurting my daddy! <laughs> and Groff he, Scouter goes off. <laughs> 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 what the... F- <laughs> Oh, you're coming with me, kid. Kakarot's kid! <laughs> <laughs> and he power geysers towards Groff. But he accidentally kills his mom in the process. Or so Id remembers. Back in the real mm. world, Khan apologizes to Id, who is still in control of Faye's body, mm-hmm. and says, look, I was working with Shabbat. I didn't know about Miang. And it does not take this well. He just keeps wailing on him. Meanwhile, Saiten quite literally goes, does like, he's like... He's like just like hanging out towards the side, looking, watching all this play out, and like to stand and watch a father and son battle to death. Is this permissible? Is this permissible? <laughs> Let me jot that down. That's that's going on the calendar of philosophy. That, that's <laughs> going to go in my musings when this yeah, little adventure's over. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Peggy Hill's musings. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be like uh, Winston Churchill's writings from <laughs> Africa. <laughs> We're just going to find out how terrible of a person this guy yeah. was. Back in Faye's head, Faye is telling the coward that it's not right for him to keep all the good memories. He needs to face the bad parts, too. The coward says he doesn't want to share the good with Id because Id killed Mom. Id says, oh, y- you killed Mom. And Faye's got, okay, guys, <laughs> we, we all, all killed, killed Mom. mom. <laughs> It's no, like, uh, dude, we all... This is Let's a, this not is, bick and argue over who killed him. It's not because mom became Miang or because father didn't notice. Don't look outside for the reason. Don't blame anyone but yourself. Yes, she was Miang. We suffered. No one could have endured it. But we can't push this onto it. It's not his fault. We're all one person. We all have to become one. So we see the cut scene of Faye's energy blast again, but this time from a unified perspective. And the energy bolt he launched at Groff loops back towards Faye, about to kill him, and Faye's mom throws herself in front of it, recovering her true self as she dies. And Id does not believe it. He thinks it's a trick, because he has only ever known mom as Miang. He never saw Karen. He never saw Karen. And when he realizes that his mom loved him, and it was all Miang that was doing the evil stuff. He breaks down and relinquishes his memories, as does the coward. And Faye has all the memories of every life he has ever lived. All of them with Ellie. None of them particularly happy. This is fantastic storytelling, by the way. I did not expect it to come together as well. Because that all led up to Faye getting some sort of peace of mind, but he gets a whole mind, and that whole mind is filled with a bunch of really crappy memories. Like, yeah. this... Th- this it, Shakespeare should have written such a play. This, this is, is incredible storytelling. Look, when we decided to do this, I was really worried that this was not going to be as good as I remembered as a kid. It, 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 that's what I've been thinking like the past five podcasts. Um, we're in the same clothes for three weeks because we sat down to do this part and it's all coming together and we can't stop. Yeah. We've just been recording videos and videos. Um, like when you're a kid, everything seems profound. Oh, yeah. This whole game was just like... Dude... And this was <laughs> this was 1998. A video game that was not Crash Bandicoot was powerful enough, so we didn't absorb all this. I certainly did not absorb all this my yeah. first time through the game. Like um, I, I very, I, I like, I know it's, I, I know it's all crazy. It doesn't all make sense, but it all comes together. It's all relevant to the story. Yes, and this is actually my favorite part in the entire game. You should really YouTube it. I don't know exactly exactly how to bring it up. It's Phase Memories. Mm-hmm. He becomes one. He regains all his memories. From the beginning, basically, of time, because mm-hmm. he is... The contact. The contact. So he is... Whatever that means. It means whatever he's been means, around for a while. It means he's Faye. Yeah. Oh, uh, that that is... Yeah. That's something that he could Pinterest a little poster of in his house. So we have a lot of fun <laughs> with this goofy-ass game. <laughs> but this is seriously a really well-done scene. Yes. The music is perfect. It's, a mu- it's that music box from I, the very beginning. I remembered it being important. That's why I've been harping on it. I remembered it's important. <laughs> And isn't it funny, Don, how music could be tied so well to memory? So this actually implies 
that Satan knew <laughs> all does. of this. Satan knows I don't think every he, ounce of this. I don't think he did. I don't. I don't know if he did. I don't. If he did, I got. It, it implies it, it. It's so perfect, though. It, it, it implies it. It's a, it's funny how it. Yeah, it really j- jars the memory. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, so phase memories from start to finish while that beautiful music mm-hmm. plays. Mm-hmm. It starts with Emperor Cain on his throne with servants carrying him like a little palakin, and he's got some spires. Little what? Little palakin, like a. A pal- or palanquin. Oh, yeah. Remember 300, that one, that weird movie? Yeah. With that one guy ghost riding with all those slaves carrying him. It's, it's that. Yeah. Only he has spires with a Tesla coil. Yeah. He's charging it up. He's chasing someone. It's Faye and Ellie in weird ancient civilization clothes. And they're running away from uh, Kane. He sends an energy bolt and it kills Ellie. Uh, Faye stops. And as Ellie is dying, she tells him to keep running to live. Abel. Faye is Abel in that, in this particular time period. The camera, and yeah. um, Oh, that's, but but Cain did not kill Abel. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's good. He killed Abel's girlfriend. That's good. Uh, uh, So flash forward to the familiar scene of Faye as Dr. Kim and the ancient Zeboim with Emerelda. And this is the part where Ellie once again sacrifices herself to keep the soldiers from taking their daughter. Kim is watching from bullet, from behind bulletproof glass that he can't get out of. In each scenario, he's powerless. Yes, that's the he's powerless. He's got no control over it. And the music just keeps getting sadder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flash forward yet again to Sophia's sacrificial suicide attack, where she's on the flagship and it's on fire, about to explode, and she's telling Lacan to live. And then we cut to Krellian's dramatic departure. If God does not exist, I will build it with my own hands. And then Lacan is taken to an execution site by the Shabbat soldiers, fearful of what he has become. And he recognizes that at some point, he unleashed a terrible cataclysm on the world, which is why they're trying to kill him. But he refuses to die. He will live, like Sophia told him. Even if I go to hell, I will live until the end of the world. He unleashes a the Diablos. Oh, that's right. After he encounters the Zohar, mm-hmm. he comes. He loses himself, kind of. Right. Like, why are you guys mad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if the world does not end, I will destroy it with my own hands, so that he can finally. So that's the die. Uh, that's the juxtaposition between Krelly and I will create. If God does not exist, I will create him. If the world will not end, I will end it. So that's where they're to. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's just a really beautiful scene <laughs> it's an amazing se- th- uh, this game like we have fun with this like don said earlier but this is world-class storytelling and it ties this crazy story back into something you can follow it doesn't just fray into random dead ends it brings it all back right which is something that a lot of people do nowadays to make their story seem more deep but again a story should be a concise narrative so yeah. they um so Faye wakes up in a void talking with a green light a force that resides within the Zohar engine. You could call it God, because it says as much. I am a part of everything, the wave existence. How you see me is how you perceive me. I have no physical form. Long ago, a modifier, a pseudo-perpetual infinite energy engine was created. That engine was named Zohar. That reactor was created by an ancient people from another planet to attain what is considered to be the ultimate energy possible within this four-dimensional universe. <laughs> Eventually, those people used that same engine to create an ultimate interplanetary invasion weapon, Deus, Zohar, as the power, primary power, but the unexpected happened. Uh, during the connection tests of Zohar with the newly completed Deus, the engine started to examine infinite potential phenomena, requiring energy the engine connected to higher dimensional space and as a result the reactor merged or synchronized with the wave existence in that higher dimension me i descended from that point of contact created by that machine through the path of sephiroth (laughs) (laughs) Sephiroth. (laughs) 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 or the domain you are in right now and incarnated in the four-dimensional world after i advented in order to stabilize myself here, I had to exchange or materialize my form to enter into the modifier engine. So when we tried to turn on the perpetual motion machine, we accidentally poke a bald god. Right, is basically <laughs> what it, it's saying. So um, 
God is being thrown around a lot in this game, but it, it, as we learned, it's almost always referencing like, Deus. It's like if the Force had no form, but then was personalized. Right. But but everyone that's been talking about God in this game, all the characters, it's been about Deus. But yeah. there is a there is a, a all powerful being that has been. Uh, but the only reason it has consciousness is because we're forcing it, like uh, through observation. Right. <laughs> yeah. So and who's who's actually holding this dialogue right now? Uh, Faye. Faye. And the existence. But Inside. it is still locked with Khan. Uh, yeah, right. Well, we don't really see what's going on outside Faye's head right now. Okay, okay. Like, he could just be, like, milky-eyed, looking off into the sun, Khan. Right. Like, okay, I hope it, something cool is, like, cool is happening. Right. I'm communing with God, Father. <laughs> 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 so the wave existence wants to go back to its own dimension, but it needs help. It can only exist as it is perceived, and its existence in this realm was defined by the contact. The person who contacted it. Which is why it's called the contact. the contact. And it was contacted on the ship while the ship was crashing. We skip to a cutscene, and a young Fae is aboard the Eldridge. And while everyone else is freaking out and running off to the escape pods, he is just some kid separated from his family. And he sees the Zohar powering up with the wave existence. And he... And the wave existence is being, like, as the contact, the wave existence takes the form that it, Faye's will is projecting. And what does Faye want? He wants his mother. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that is how the existence manifests. My will was incarnated through a biocomputer, which was vital for Deus after combining with me the biocomputer evolved its functions, and that bioplant generated a central element. That is her. I was split by your contact. My physical form, or flesh, stayed in Zohar while my will went into Elheim, and my power went into you. That's why I waited to unite with you, and now it is fulfilled. My only remaining desire is to break this cage of fleshly existence. In order to do that, I must become perfect by combining with Elheim as well as my other split physical form, Deus. The only way to return to my original dimension is to destroy this physical body in the four-dimensional world. The Zohar is perfect, so in order to destroy the Zohar, I need the strength that was attributed to you. Zohar can only be destroyed by the hands of the contact. And what happens to Ellie? She is bound in the system by another's will to become one with me. Someone else wants to become one with God. And she is being bound into the system by that entity or person, probably Crowley. <laughs> 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 Since he's the only one other person we know. <laughs> right. Um, however, uh, having been created as a weapon, the Deus system seeks to unify itself with all of you for a different purpose than that of mine. Originally, her release should have been performed by me as I don't really care about her. I just want to go back home. <laughs> right. But I'm also bound to the system just as, just as she is. So I'm un unable to participate. You are the only one who can save your girlfriend and free God. <laughs> <laughs> Just as Deus and I are inseparable, you and her are also inseparable. This, by the way, is the speech usually given one hour into the JRPG. Yeah. Not you are special because you are the contact. She is special because she is the anti-type and the mother. And uh, right. But see, the Gazelle Ministry was using all these terms, so they must have understood something yeah, about the Zohar. Like they're getting, they know the Zohar as the power source of God. Right. They, they're thinking of the, the weapon, mostly. Like right. They, they were designed for that. Yeah. And what I love about this is Faye hears all this just unloaded on him, and he says, okay, so I destroy Ze Deus and the Zohar, and I save Ellie? Is that what I'm getting at? <laughs> and the existence says, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about all this. I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably responsible for your split personality thing, too. I don't know. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry about that. That's probably me. That, that was me. Hey, that's, that's my problem. I, you know. And you know what? I kind of fixed it, so it's not a big deal. The wave existence says, to liberate us, use the Xeno Gears. Destroy Zohar. Use the Xeno Gears. So finally, finally. Uh, back, in the back in the real world, Red Welltall is smacked with God energy from Zohar <laughs> and becomes a Xeno Gear. Title mm. drop. <laughs> Title, yep. <laughs> 80 hours in. <laughs> uh, okay, so, got another set of notes. <laughs> What's our time look like, Adam? 
I imagine we've got about another half hour. Probably been half an hour like it is each time. Uh, Yep. Yeah, 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 we're good at this. Now you go investigate those strange readings. Yes, we're playing Rogue Squadron. Anyway, Faye is now a complete personality, more or less. And you know, he but run- isn't any happier. I don't know. Well, let's find out. He runs into his dad's gear to apologize for trying to kill him. <laughs> hey, you know, dad. first it's all heartwarming, but then Khan starts acting a little weird. Khan says, "This is good. You and I must portrait change to Groff, become one." Oh no! Ha ha ha! I have reached the limit of the body I possessed on that day three years ago. <laughs> I required a body that would tide me over until your true awakening. That is why I acquired the body of your father. Regardless of your awakening, your merging, and the inherited memories you acquired, there was no way for you to know this since you had lost your memory at that point. At the point at which I merged with your father. So he's Groff! He's Groff. Your dad's Groff. Well, possessed by Groff. Possessed by you. (laughs) (laughs) Another you. (laughs) Uh, of course, they were just parts of me. I couldn't hold on to Khan totally. His ego was far stronger than I thought. When my control weakened, he shows himself to you as wise man. But you have awakened. The body is now useless. I must return to my original body, the one you inhabit. And Faye's like, uh, stop it, Dad, please. <laughs> and Groff's like, oh, don't worry. I hear you, Faye. You see, he and I are one. I am Khan. Khan is me. <laughs> He has become one with me, so you too should open your heart and unite with me. Then we can kill everything. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Faye gets into his pimped out Xeno gear, but can't quite bring himself to fight his dad, who is also himself. (laughs) Right. That'd be difficult for anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, He's been through a lot already. Uh, Mm -hmm. Groff says, you're so naive. Why don't you understand your naivety is what killed Sophia? What killed your mother? And Faye's like, hey, I already know that. That's why I swore to never run away again. That's why I must rescue Ellie, so don't get in my way. Wake up. Open your eyes, Father. Open your eyes, Lacan. Groff says, I came to understand after my contact with the existence that even if Deus was destroyed, as long as humans still inhabit this land, Miang and Elheim, Miang, Elheim, will be born time and again. Then all living things may as well perish with Deus itself. That's the only path to freedom. The only way to release us from this eternal cycle of death and life. The tragedies of history and the spell of fate. Once I awaken Deus as a weapon, I'll obliterate, obliterate all living things. That's what I concluded. Miang and Elheim are not just Deus' mouthpieces. That woman is its main body. Why can't you see that? And Faye says, that's not true. She gave her life for me by shielding me from harm. <laughs> her eyes weren't Miang's. M- mother came back at the last moment. Miang, Mother, even Ellie. We're all humans born on this planet. Deus doesn't matter. You see, I will bring Ellie back. Father, uh, Groff, Lacan, back down. <laughs> a little confusing. <laughs> the Miang saying thing is still confusing. Yeah. Uh, and so after a climactic battle with Groff, Faye realizes that the Zohar is trying to merge with him. The Zohar being a different thing than the wave, wave existence. It's trying to do its right. thing and merge with the Xeno gear and Faye. Groff recognizes what's happening and he decides to save Faye by flying into the Zohar. This is what Lacan wanted all along. After all, I am a per- I am an imperfect ex- imperfect existence. It was inevitable that it would come to this considering what happened in the past. Okay, so you see eventually his body died but the original Lacan Lacan transmigrated bringing the destiny of becoming a contact with him. He was reborn as your present body. Okay, but I am not the true contact Lacan. It is impossible for me to make real contact. However, I could fool this thing for a while. (laughs) I'm an imperfect cop. I'm an imperfect version of you. This thing wants you. I'll play with it for a while. I give you time for the end game. Right. This is my redemption arc. (laughs) For myself. (laughs) To save me. (laughs) So, uh, Deus' system will continue to seek out Faye, but Groff is going to confuse it for a while. Faye is the only one who can destroy God. Right. Groff says, through many generations, Miang is beginning to break free from her bounds. Now that Elheim is merged with Deus, she has all of her memories back. All the memories from her original birth as the contact's complement up to her current transmigration. 
That includes all the lives she has lived as Miang and her substitutes over the centuries. And, of course, that includes your mother's memories, too. So Miang and, and Elheim were, were a thing before? Supposedly. Something like that. Both yeah. created both created at the very beginning. Yes. Faye, cut away all the binds on mankind. You should be able to do that now. Save her. And all the women bound with her. Faye rejoins with Saiten and Bart, and he spies a pendant on the ground, presumably dropped by uh, Khan's body. And it's the same pendant he gave Ellie, the one that Khan left Faye in Lahan. Together, the party journey to the site where all human life on the planet began. And Saiten doesn't know what the hell, but Faye says, hey, yeah, I got all the memories going back to the genesis of mankind. I know more than you, Saiten. This is my turn. This is my time to shine. Oh, and by the way, it's not permissible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know that now. <laughs> Long ago, Deus crash landed on this planet in an interplanetary colony ship. In order to revive, it, revive itself, it detached the Zohar modifi- modifier's core. The core came down here. A single woman awoke and arose out of it. She's the mother of all humanity. She's also that long haired purple yep, girl from, from the very, very, beginning. very beginning yep. of the game. And after she awoke, she used all her power to bear several beings. These would become the ancestors of all of humanity, the emperor, the gazelle ministry. She also gave birth to duplicates of herself to serve as humanity's caretakers, two selves, the human mother and the weapon, the subject and the complement, Ellie and Miang. I, the sole survivor from the colony ship, met Ellie. And Bart's like, Faye, I know you're the protagonist and all, but how do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> and Faye's like, well, usually human memories cannot be passed down through generations. However, um, Ellie and I and Miang are different. Due to our connection with the wave existence, that is, due to Zohar's ability to change possible phenomena, we can clearly store data in our introns. In other words, we can leave behind memories to be inherited by our descendants. Nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, Saiten points out that the wreckage of the site contains a tube with the mummified remains of the first woman on the planet. And now that the exposition is out of the way, it's time to take action. You're back in a control room. Uh, it's been a while since we've actually had, like, this. Okay, we've had right. enough ancient lore. It's time that, uh, you know... We start doing things. Move the plot along. Okay, so Bart's in charge now. He says, okay, guys, we're, we got to destroy the Zohar, right? And Which means we got to think like a if, Zohar. If we destroy the Zohar, then this uh, thing that's been nuking the world and all the angels that's sent out after us will shut down. If we hit that bullseye, all the dominoes will fall over. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> Uh, Saiten says, well, yes, in theory. However, along with... It, it'll, it'll also take out all of our gears. Of course, admittedly, after we take out that, all of our gear-related problems will be over. So. <laughs> uh, I will miss being able to throw Kaokens because ether won't be a thing anymore, but oh well. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Rico asks... Making the world's biggest psalmist, <laughs> Jack. Rico asks why the angels look like angels. And Saiten says, oh, well, they're probably incarnated from humanity's image of God's servants. So essentially when Deus woke up and shaped itself, it shaped itself based on our perceptions of it. So it's taking cues from our mythology. Saiten notes that the angels are acting a little weird because they're taking non-mutants as well as humans. And Faye's like, what, does, does God need more bio parts? Actually, I don't think so. I think something else is going. I think something has changed in its original programming. I'm not sure what, but Krellian called Deus the mother. If God is the mother, then the motives are coming from the great mother, impending the growth of the child. And I don't know what's going on, Faye. I swear, I swear. But something is going on. Something weird is happening. This is not supposed to... God was supposed to destroy everything and leave it at that, but he's, it seems to be doing something else in, you know, in, in tandem with killing us all. Did and Krellian join... The biomass? I can't remember. Yes, he joined with Ellie. Okay. Uh, he and Ellie are both part of the biomass now. Okay. And Faye's like, okay, well, whatever, man. Just, can we beat them? Can we beat them? And Zephyr's like, okay, guys, I don't know if this helps. We've got a secret battleship called Excalibur. We can use it in the final battle. Faye's like, oh, well, you didn't bring this thing out any other time? 
we had we had, we had the tarp over it. We didn't need it. Didn't, didn't, didn't need it. it. Yeah. And Bart's like, okay, we got a secret battleship. We got surface forces. All the um, Kislev and Ave people. Uh, we got the Shavat forces. We the problem is Merkava's main guns. Also, all of those angels. We can't get past them because they keep healing because Krellian gave them nano machines. <laughs> <laughs> And Melchior shows up. Don't worry about that plot point because phase <laughs> gear is a Xeno gear. I am upgrading all of your stuff to the same game title. Also, I'm a, <laughs> and, and I'm equipping them with anti nano machines. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm glad we figured that out. However, there's still that cannon. Well, Saiten's like, well, okay. I have estimated that the Merkava's main gun, which is pretty much. A, 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 a I win button for the damn thing says, well, he, he says there's a 1.2 second interval between reloads. So we've got a window. Technically. It's all the time in the world. It's all yeah. the time <laughs> in the world. If we can get close enough, we can break through the gravitational spatial correction of mm. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bart's like, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but you're saying we just need to get really close and shut it up, right? And Faye's like, what, like a head-on assault? And Bart's like, dude, wait, I got a plan. <laughs> We're not just going to rush in. You see, I got the Yggdrasil 4 super dimensional gear still, and we've got the Excalibur, and they've both got pretty good barriers. I bet they could take a shot and keep going. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else is like, yeah, one shot. 1.2 seconds later, it's just going to kill you. Uh, well, well, work with me here. <laughs> <laughs> what, you see... We've got two barriers. <laughs> so here's what we do. Uh, the Yggdrasil isn't strong enough to stand up to two. Neither is the Excalibur if you put them together. <laughs> Just hear me out. First, we turn the Yggdrasil into heavy assault mode <laughs> and put that giant cool gear onto the Excalibur. We couple the generators, and presto, we got 40 seconds of shielding. <laughs> <laughs> by doing that we can reduce energy usage to just supporting the whole of the ship and generating the barrier so we've reduced our carbon footprint as yeah, well yeah. excellent this will allow most of the energy to be devoted into generating a barrier the next shift will be um, yeah so we, we can concentrate all of it on the front on the front just to make sure we survive the main cannon blast and everyone else is like okay so Technically, you're right. However, if you put all power to the shields, how are we going to move in to, for the kill? Oh. Drift. Yeah. Drift. Make sure you have momentum. Turn Actually, the on. Bart has a plan for that, too. He's got it, he's got it all figured out. Oh. <laughs> Don't we have a ton of solid fuel rockets from those ancient ruins? Oh, Bart, you devil. <laughs> we'll just have the Yggdrasil in gear form, armpit two... two are, 4,000-year-old ICBMs, light the ends of them, and that will provide our, perpe- our per- forward motion. <laughs> Once the Excalibur shield is, get- is down, it backs off, and the Yggdrasil goes forward using its own generator. That way, when the Merkava fires again, it's defenseless for just under a second. <laughs> at that point, we had the Yggdrasil right at the muzzle of the cannon, and we fire the Excalibur's main gun into the generator of the Yggdrasil to blow up the whole damn thing. Easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Saiten's like, okay, technically this works. However, our margin of error is measured in the hummingbird's heartbeat. <laughs> it's how poetic. Yeah. So Sig is saying, well, okay, yeah, we'd also be defenseless against the angels. And Faye is like, well, to be fair, fighting angels is like the one thing I know we can do. While this is happening, so <laughs> I came here to fight angels and chew bubble gum. Oh, and what's this secret? I seem to be out of my Bazooka Joe, which is a shame because the comics kill me. <laughs> so, uh, when this podcast is over, you, you 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 will know that this happened. But you also need to know this: there is footage somewhere on YouTube of glorious '90s CG, a 500-story giant robot formerly the administrative district of Kislev, is riding a half-mile-long airship being propelled by 4,000-year-old nuclear missiles. You've been, mis- you've been living a lie. <laughs> 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 
And the plan works. The super dimensional hyper gear punches the muzzle of the Merkava cannon. Bart scoots away in his own gear. <laughs> And Excalibur opens up, opens fire and destroys the Yggdrasil, which creates a chain reaction and destroys God's Ark. Unfortunately, God's Ark is incredibly big, incredibly powerful, and it starts to um, explode quite a bit. Mm. And Saiten says, oh, what a miscalculation. <laughs> <laughs> the explosion was too big. It reacted with the main condenser right under the main canyon. Can- cannon. Um, Whichever. How could I have been so stupid? Faye's like, um... What's going on? And Saiten's like, well, the planet might be dying, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, something seems to be happening in God's Ark. Oh, okay. God just erupted from Ark, and he's pissed. On the bright side, he's not destroying the Earth with explosions. Downside is he's generating some kind of weird weather pattern uh, to terraform the world. Mm. Probably because he's angry. <laughs> so if you didn't turn into a mutant and get eaten by God, if you weren't killed by the angels, if you weren't killed by everything else that happened in the game, you're going to be day after tomorrow. Yeah. And that stinks because that was such a bad movie. Yeah. And also the Merkava death ray. We can't kind of forget about that. But oh, Well, Faye starts podcasting about it. At that point, the earth quaked and shook. And from the location where Merkava crashed, a giant object appeared. It was Deus's final form. The Merkava was merely its vessel. It was attempting to convert the entire planet into a weapon. We retreated back into the base at the Snow Plains to form a new strategy. We decided to go back into Deus. Time was running out for us. So, congratulations. You're uh, back in the open world. Hope you enjoy the world as it is. It's a little rough around the edges, a little icy. But you're back in control. It's the end of disc two, end of the game. But hey, you're it's all end game, you and can, you can explore. You can again. explore, but you, and you're back in Shavat. Well, sh- the ruins of Shavat. Shavat crashed <laughs> off screen. Uh, it's now serving as the shelter and base of operations for what remains of humanity and de- demi humans. Um, Zeph- Zephyr and Saiten are talking. Ramses has decided to fight alongside humanity because the elements encouraged him, and Faye hopes to one day fight him in a martial arts tournament. It'd be whimsical if, you know, this Armageddon wasn't just happening outside. <laughs> I hope when this is all over, there's you, a, a future. That's so <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Like. I, I hope to fight you in a martial arts tournament after God stops trying to kill us. <laughs> 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 and uh, Zephyr tells Faye that there's no guarantee that killing Deus and Zohar is going to bring Ellie back. And Faye says, well, to quit would be meaningless. People should be free. No one bound by others, bound to others. Inside me, there's a part of me that desires that freedom and a part of me that gives me hope. So I'm going to fight. I'm just going to hope things work out. <laughs> mm. And Zephyr says, well, guess I'm hoping for a miracle then. <laughs> and Faye's like, dude, what the hell? Just <laughs> could, you, could, you, could you like wish me luck? Could you say I believe in you? <laughs> oh, that's going to take a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so side quests are available again, but first got to explore the ruins. And Hans is back, that dolphin. Aww. With the sweet sounds. Yeah. And he's married himself a pink dolphin. Oh. A widower. She's n- he is now a stepfather to Lance, ah, a brash young man, a brash young dolphin who does not recognize than his new father. Look, Hans, you may be dating my mom, but you keep your <laughs> fins off my manga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Faye's like, hey, so what happened to you? I didn't know you had a son. Well, the, 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 the James sank. The tame sank, man. I'm sorry. The, the wife, my new wife here, Anna, she was widowed. I wanted to protect her, and the captain teased me about it. He said, hey, yeah, I always took you for a cold fish. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I, I don't know if he actually says that, but, you know, it works. Uh, so Hans is like, hey, you've changed quite a bit yourself, Faye. And, and Faye's like, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. Found God. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> I found God. I, I dug him out of a snowbank. Now he's trying to kill us. <laughs> Actually, that's a different God. Um, it's not really. It, it, technically, it's not poly. Uh, the you know, uh, it's it's weird. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Hans is like, well, it's nice to. It was nice having the captain around to watch over me, and I, I still hope that he survived. I I I, I know. I I can't believe he died. I, I I don't I don't believe that for a second, man. One day, mm. one day he's just gonna walk down that ha- that hallway. 
and you see like the ghost of the captain walking towards men, him. Men of the sea don't die, Don. They yeah. just they sail to a new horizon. And Hans is musing about how that reunion's going to go. Mm-hmm. And Hans is going to be like, I bet he's just going to walk in here and say, tap, tap, tap in his cane. He's going to say, <laughs> Hans, <laughs> looks like we get ourselves... We got, we got our hands on a priceless treasure. What kind of face is that? You don't believe me, huh? This time it's true. Honest. At which point the ghost of the captain materializes and says, <laughs> Hans, looks like we got our hands on a priceless treasure. Everyone's shocked, of course, and the captain says, hey, you know the score by now, boys. Men of the sea never say die. <laughs> and the captain is saying, Hans, this time it's true. It's an island with buried treasure. It's called Dune Man Isle. An ancient hero defeated a monster there, and a legend has it, his fabled sword is there too. And Hans is like, okay, well, what info do you have? Do you know where this place is, and do you have a ship? Do you realize the Armageddon is happening? And then Captain's like, oh, details. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a side quest for Faye and Co. when they're ready. Um, Hans' stepson says he wishes the captain was his dad. <laughs> 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 and the captain says, Har, a walrus with a penguin for a son. Har, 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 har. <laughs> and, the, and the kid's like, I'm a dolphin, not a penguin. I'm a dolphin like my dad. I, don't, I didn't mean to call him that. <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> like, because, we just... <laughs> because we need levity. <laughs> and the captain is here. Men of the sea never say die. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the captain says, anyway, guys, have fun. Oh, how did I survive? No, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> So, the Shavat base is pretty miserable. Uh, people are burning. Except for that. Yeah, except for <laughs> Captain. Fun. People are burning the books. People are burning books for warmth. All the Choo Choo's are gone, presumably dead. Faye, what about Choo Choo? Uh, Choo Choo's live. Yeah. Okay. Um, Faye is like looting their like room, getting some cool like late game items, and he's like asking the Choo Choo ghosts not to haunt him. <laughs> you also meet Dan, and he tells Faye, Look, I saw that you turned into Id. And I understand what happened in Lahan now. It's we're, we're cool. We're square man. We're, 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 we're cool. square man. Uh, it wasn't your fault. And Saiten's daughter Midori also says that she was never really all that scared. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the moment where that ring of hers you found at the very beginning of the game mm-hmm. by looting around her flower bed. You've had it in your inventory for like eighty five hours now. Mm-hmm. You can give it back to her. Get an item. Is it a good item? I think so. It's like a Hercules ring or something. I don't know. Mm. Anyway. Once you leave Shavat, you're back to the world map. And what a map it is. Uh, you can go to Kislev. Kislev has survivors. You can battle tournaments. Yeah, you can do the tournaments. That's what I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's multiplayer. It's really good. Um, but it, if I remember, it's a very... Uh, the music's bleak. very bleak. It's bleak. Everything's but very bleak. Like, um, the, like there's a guard who says, my entire family is dead. But anyway, welcome to Kislev. Um, you, you can go to our battling tournament. It's still in that operation. Ave is pretty bleak. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, everything's pretty bleak. Uh, you can go to Dune Man Isle as a side quest, um, but all, on, but you know all roads lead back to Deus. You're going back there mm-hmm. next time. <laughs> next time, <laughs> <laughs> a lot's about to happen. Right. So uh, that's all we got for today's episode. I think so. I might my vocal cords are dying. <laughs> yeah. Vocal cords are dying, Cloud. So. Uh, <laughs> This is, um, we just had a lot laid on us in this one. Um, we hope that you join us for the conclusion. Yeah, I think we're get yeah, one or two episodes more. One or two episodes more, and uh, we, we finally come to the conclusion of Xenogears. Uh, what a journey. What, what a journey, Don. You know, we've, um, we've learned a lot about Faye. We've learned a lot about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we'd like is to learn more about you. So leave comments on the videos and let us know about a time that uh, you were locked in Mortal Kombat with your father and your your, uh, <laughs> your id and super ego uh, coincided to allow the ego to reveal memories that made you realize that your mother wasn't as horrible of a person as she seemed and it's not any of your faults that she died. Um, let us know in the comments. Uh, like if you liked it, like if you didn't, just like. It costs you nothing. You clicked on the video, just click like. Um, share if you want us to uh, be known or if you think that uh, you have friends that like to uh, listen about JRPGs that dive deep into uh, biblical allegory and uh, union psychology. And uh, um, there's another one, like, share, and subscribe. Click that uh, bell if you want us to... Um, come back we will be doing a rebound podcast probably when uh zeno gears is over with so give us some time to get back on this we are pumping a lot of emotion into this but uh 
all in all, um, have a ni- have a nice night. <laughs>